hot on NBC. Channel 9 News at this hour, I'm Micah Johnson. Tomorrow's election day, and as you head to the polls, you may need to take along some notes. There are a lot of propositions on the ballot, including a question about whether Texas should have a lottery. El Paso Electric is still in Austin trying to win a rate increase. The city, meanwhile, has come up with a new proposal. Now this. If your breakfast looks like this, maybe you should try Caro's Best Value Power Breakfast. Eight choices for $2.59. Only at Caro's. About 100 students got together at UTEP tonight to discuss free trade. And we'll show you who's getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Join us tonight at 10 for Channel 9 News. If Channel 9, KTSM-TV, El Paso. Channel 9, KTSM-TV, El Paso. You may need to do some studying before heading to the polls. Hello and thanks for watching Channel 9 News tonight. I'm Micah Johnson. The polls open bright and early at 7 tomorrow morning. The results could boost El Paso's economy by millions of dollars. When you go to the polls, you face a long ballot. Channel 9's Erica Castillo shows us tonight there are four major issues that could really affect the area. Position 4 could bring a new state prison and a new psychiatric facility to El Paso. It may help alleviate recent overcrowding and controversy over prisoners being released too early. Proposition 12 could add $150 million to water and sewer systems in the colonias, while Proposition 13 could keep millions of dollars in student loans at UTEP and the area's community college. Proposition 11 will determine whether Texas will play the lottery. Officials say the absentee voting turnout was very high, especially for a proposition ballot. Almost everyone seems to have an opinion about a proposition, even if they're not planning to vote. I think the water to the colonials is probably the most important. Why that one? We well, can't live without water. I think the loans and money for the, for the university will help the university a whole lot. Be the prison and, and the water to the colonials, I, you know, I think are the most important ones. I don't think that's what everybody's going to be going for, though, but... I think that the uh, lottery is probably the most important issue this time around. Why the lottery? Well, because I think the state is hurting so badly for money, and this is an opportunity for us to get that kind of money without... Erica Castillo, Channel 9 News. Despite the proposition to build more prisons facilities in Texas, there are actually some prisons in the state that are empty. Reporter Diane Biancalana has more tonight. Houston-based corporation and its president, Patrick Graham, and its vice president, Michael Graham, have been given grand jury indictments for developing this $8 million, 500-bed minimum security prison. The grand jury alleges that the Graham brothers restrained all competitive bids on the prison project. District attorney Richard Baraha began investigating the case about a year ago. And the end result was to... Uh circumvent various competitive bidding statutes in our state and the result of which cost probably significantly higher than had it been competitively bid. It all began in 1989. N-Group Securities planned to build six private prisons across Texas with bond money. The corporation told Pecos County lawmakers they wanted to build one of the prisons in Fort Stockton. Pecos County officials say they jumped at the idea of a prison in Fort Stockton because of the depressed economy. N Group Securities told them the detention facility would employ 75 to 100 workers and it would also relieve prison overcrowding. But so far, this hasn't happened. Of the six prisons that were built across Texas, only one of them houses prisoners. County Judge Freddie Capers says N Group Securities told them PRICOR, a management company would contract inmates from overcrowded prisons. The contracts never mention whose obligation it was to find inmates for the facility. Procor does not hunt inmates. In addition, Drexel Burnham Lambert, the bond house that put up money for the facility, used junk bonds. We felt like we were pretty safe. And the group that put this package together had a great deal of credibility. Governor Mark White, uh, Jim Maddox, and after the package had already come put together, did we find out they were going bankrupt. In Fort Stockton, Diane Biancalana, Channel 9 News. 
The latest city proposal indicates some compromise with El Paso Electric. A revised $50 million plan would mean no increase in rates this year, but hikes over the next four years as customers take on more of the expenses of Palo Verde Unit 3. But if accepted by the utility and the PUC, customers would also benefit from profits of power sold to Mexico. To compromise uh, this issue, which has been a long-standing issue, and provide some means for the company to retain to have some revenues while Palo Verde comes in over the time that it may be needed. The recognition here is that Palo Verde Unit 3 is still not needed until 1995 and 1996. The plan was pitched before the PUC this afternoon. One local organization is taking credit away from City Council for a decision not to build a nightclub on the east side. The East El Paso Family Association says the reason Graham Company opted against the Pebble Hill site was because the public outcry was so great not because city representatives discouraged the plan. They say three city councilors voiced their intention to vote in favor of the nightclub. The finalists for the position of president for the El Paso Community College have been named. Board President Juan Galindo says narrowing the list of 60 applicants wasn't easy. The finalists are vice president at Milwaukee Area Technical College, Manuel Rivera, Executive Vice President of Bee County College, Leonardo de la Garza, and El Paso native William Campion, who is president of Central Florida Community College. The El Paso City Council Advisory Task Force honored State Representative Jack Vile today. The El Paso Republican received praise for his legislative work in the community and health services. Vile is instrumental for putting Proposition 4 on the ballot, which would allocate bond money for a state prison and a psychiatric hospital for the mentally ill in El Paso. Well, the New Mexico Department of Energy says two more bins full of radioactive material bound for the waste isolation pilot plant are ready to roll. But it could be months before the shipments are cleared. The bins contain mostly glass and are undergoing a lengthy certification process at Idaho National Engineering Laboratory. WIP is ready to operate once legal hurdles are cleared. Border economic issues have made headlines ever since free trade became a real possibility. But many have overlooked the fact that cholera is threatening not only people, but economies as well. Cholera is reported in almost half of Mexico's 31 states. The country stands to forfeit a bundle in tourism and even more in vegetable and seafood exports. The WADA's tourism director says unfounded cholera panics and rumors could do tremendous damage. So far, tens of thousands of visitors have steered clear Peru, where the first outbreak of cholera was reported earlier this year. There are ways to protect yourself from cholera. Here are a few tips. Boil any water you're using about before drinking, cooking, or washing with it. Avoid food and drink from illegal street vendors. Don't eat raw or partially cooked foods. Check with the Centers for Disease Control before traveling to an area that may be affected. Cholera advisories are available in both English and Spanish. You can call area code 404-332-4559 for an English-speaking update or 404-330-3132 for the Spanish version. Mexican and American free trade experts took center stage at UT El Paso tonight. They were invited to help clear up some of the confusion surrounding the impending free trade agreement. About 70 political science and economic students took part in the discussion, which was titled, The Cost of Free Trade Along the Border, The Winners and Losers. Bottom line is who's going to be winner and who's going to be loser. I don't think there's going to be uh, many people losing except those who are already losers. Uh, trade is a matter of money, and uh, people who have no money will end up having probably, if anything, a cheap job. Almost all of tonight's panelists feel sure the agreement will soon be finalized. One even went so far as to predict the historic agreement will be signed in about five months. The spirit of free trade is spreading rapidly, and so are the concerns. A new study says it will cost more than $2 billion to protect the border's environment. The Texas Consortium report also points out the need to improve the Texas highway system, including special priority to highway and bridge projects in South Texas and El Paso. The study also notes tariff policies need to be restructured and worker retraining programs could use some improvement. The Israeli delegation to the Middle East peace conference left Madrid today a few hours after finishing talks with Syrian and Lebanese representatives. Israel Deputy Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was not overly optimistic after their first meetings, but nevertheless was encouraged. We want Israel to be ranked with a circle of peace, not with a circle of war and guns. And this perhaps began here in Madrid. We shall know very soon if the parties are interested in peace, if they're interested in moving ahead and not in moving backwards. 
But even as the negotiators expressed optimism, a new potential hurdle was being raised in Israel. New settlers and hardline cabinet ministers began a new settlement in the Golan Heights, one of the territories which the Syrians contend should be returned to their control. A bit of history took place, and a lot of history was put in a place today in California as five U.S. presidents opened the Ronald Reagan Library. Reporter Linda Douglas was at today's historical event. It was a tribute to the power of the image. 23 years of history summed up in one picture. There were five presidents, along with their wives and the widow of President Lyndon Johnson. There were the children of President John Kennedy and the grandchildren of Franklin Roosevelt. 78-year-old Gerald Ford joked about the immortality of presidents. But you can be sure that old presidents never just fade away. Open the California. presidents hailed the opening of the Ronald Reagan Library, a massive $60 million project built with private funds but operated by the taxpayers. It will eventually house 55 million pages of documents from Reagan's presidency, though most won't be available to the public until after the turn of the century. The museum will hold 75,000 gifts given to the Reagans, as well as replicas of the White House and Oval Office and old movies from Reagan's days as an actor. The other presidents seemed content to stand in Reagan's shadow today. Each praised him for his unprecedented buildup of U.S. military forces. And he knew that it comes to national defense, finishing second means finishing last. There was also praise from Democrat Jimmy Carter, who lost the presidency to Reagan. But the show was stolen by the great communicator himself, who spoke of his own life in grand terms. My 80 years... I prefer to call that the 41st anniversary of my 39th birthday. <laughs> I've seen what men can do for each other and do to each other. I've seen war and peace, feast and famine. Linda Douglas for NBC News, Los Angeles. Well, just a short while ago, there was a three-car accident in central El Paso. Channel 9's Richard Lopez is there now with an update. Richard? Yeah, Michael, what we understand is at 9.30, a green Pontiac coming across the Santa Fe Bridge ran the customs checkpoint. That Pontiac, about three blocks later, at the corner of El Paso and Paisano, slammed into the side of a Lincoln Continental. Now, witnesses say the occupants in that green Pontiac took off running. Well, a few moments later, customs brought in their drug-sniffing dog. The dog went around the car and in the trunk came across a large bag of white powder. Now, customs agents just told me that is not an illegal drug. They say that's a, a powder used in construction, a drywall powder, so no drugs there. But uh, the person in the Lake Continental, we were told, was not seriously injured, and police are still searching for the suspects in that green Pontiac. Reporting from downtown El Paso, Richard Lopez, Channel 9 News. Richard, no idea why the suspect ran the uh, checkpoint? No, Mike. At first they thought maybe they were carrying illegal drugs, but after the search of the car and the fact that they did not find any drugs in the car, that's been ruled out. They may have been illegal aliens trying to smuggle themselves through in the car, but right now we don't know. All right, we'll just wait and find out. Richard, thank you very much. Still ahead on Channel 9 News, a vote is about to be taken on the new leader of the CIA, and some parents at Parkland want to make sure their children are safe at school as Channel 9 News continues. Art comes to light as the City of El Paso Arts Resources Department presents O Vertigo Dance in Broken Wings. It's intoxicating, emotional, and breathtaking. O Vertigo comes to the Shamazal Theater Tuesday, November 12th, 8 p.m. Broken Wings, a unique reality by O Vertigo. Tickets from 350 at the door or to assure your attendance, call 541-4481 and see how art comes to light. Hey, which of these two premium beers do you genuinely prefer? This beer right here is much better. This is Miller Genuine Draft, and here's Coors Extra Gold Draft. Oh my God, I don't believe it. 57% of premium beer drinkers prefer Coors Extra Gold in a recent taste test. I guess I'm one of them. Want to know something else? Hit me. Coors Extra Gold was judged best premium lager at the Great American Beer Festival. I wouldn't doubt that. Slow brewed for that real beer flavor and color, the way beer was meant to be, which may be why it's taste. Blow the milk out of the water. Coors Extra Gold. If you're missing real taste, beer is bad. I'm definitely going to get into the gold. I made it home last night, finally, after an hour on the freeway. The light bulb blows. Okay, get up on the ladder. And while I'm up there, the phone rings. I gotta come back down the ladder. This guy's promising me big savings if I leave AT&T. No way. Big savings. So I tell him, listen, I'm not paying a lot now. 
with AT&T, I don't have to question, I don't have to worry about my long distance. Give me a break. It's just not AT&T. Senate debate on the nomination of Robert Gates to be director of the Central Intelligence Agency began today. Gates' main supporter, Senator David Boren, spoke on his behalf and voiced optimism that Gates could fill the director's position successfully. I am prepared to believe that the nominee would in fact do things differently if he were confronted with similar circumstances in the future. I believe the president should select as the next director someone about whom there can be no question and no doubts. Someone who doesn't have to labor to counter suspicion on many close questions. Gates is expected to be easily confirmed to the CIA's director position when the vote is taken Monday or Tuesday. Guardian Angels continue to march outside the West Palm Beach courtroom, protesting the possibility that the alleged rape victim in the William Kennedy Smith case could be made to look bad in the public eye. Reporter Susan Wallace is in Palm Beach with the latest tonight. The Guardian Angels set up shop outside the Palm Beach County Courthouse. The volunteer vigilante group is protesting suspected plans by William Smith's lawyers to dig up dirt on the alleged victim in this case and put her on trial. It shouldn't be about that, you know, it should be about facts, about what happened that night. Inside court, another half dozen jurors were questioned about what they've heard about the case, heard about Smith, heard about his uncle, Senator Ted Kennedy. I thought it was kind of funny that he was walking around without his pants, but yeah. that's what happens. Smith's jury expert, Kathy Bennett, still studies every potential juror. She's now publicly confirming rumors that she is stricken with cancer and stalling her treatment until the end of Smith's case. I feel great. I'm inspired. I've got an innocent client that gives you all the faith to fight. Lucky to have her on my side. Bennett has a winning track record in Palm Beach County. The two cases she's helped pick juries for, the defendants were both acquitted. In West Palm Beach, Susan Wallace for NBC News. An Irvin High School honor student is in serious condition tonight after being shot in the left eye by a group of suspected gang members. 16-year-old Amundo Deno was shot last night after leaving a car show at the Civic Center. Doctors are reluctant to operate because of where the bullet is lodged. Police say they have no suspects, but are looking for a blue and white 1989 or 1990 Ford Aerostar with tinted windows. School officials and parents are teaming up at Parkland High School in an attempt to crank down on gang activity. Members of the just-created Parent Patrol met in front of the school, hoping to make the campus a safer place to learn. Members of this new program will patrol the campus during lunch and after school. Well, we don't know for sure that it will work. But we know for sure that we're going to try it and see if it helps. A lot of parents and community members are wanting to know how they can help make school safer. No, I don't think it's going to work at all because, you know, most of us, we don't, the parents come and it's mm -hmm. like, no, we won't, we won't even be around them and we won't listen to them that good. Still, the negative reaction won't keep parents for doing what they can to protect their children. El Paso's west side has been hit by a series of high-tech heists. Tonight in Crime Stoppers, they need your help in taking these computer crooks offline. Here's Detective Dave Garcia with some clues. Crime Stoppers and the El Paso Police Department are looking for the individuals who have been stealing computers on the west side of town. During September and October of this year, Microsystems International at 5400 North Mesa, the Sun Carnival Association office at 2609 North Stanton, and Microcity Computer at 3800 North Mesa have all been burglarized. The subjects have broken in by removing the molding around the windows, removing the glass, and crawling inside. Once inside, the subjects disable the alarm and move through the business, taking only the most expensive computer equipment. On occasion, they have been able to get inside of the buildings without any forced entry at all. These burglars have taken over $20,000 in merchandise to date. If you call Crime Stoppers with information that leads to the arrest and indictment of these burglars, we'll pay you a cash reward of $1,000. As always, you do not have to give us your name, and your calls will be kept confidential when you call Crime Stoppers at 543-6000. We went through a cold spell. Now it's going to warm up again. Meteorologist Barry Finn will have the forecast as Channel 9 News continues. If you see news happening, call Channel 9 News at 532-5421. Count on people, people who care. You can always count on Osco for help.
helpful, caring service, and great savings. Like L'Oreal Studio Line hair care products, just $2.49 each, less a dollar mail-in rebate. Men and Speed Sticks and Lady Speed Sticks, only $1.69 each. And Replen's Vaginal Gel, just $12.99, less a $3 mail-in rebate. Now at Osco. At Osco, you can count on people who care. SunWest Bank invites you to get ready cash, money that's set aside for your use whenever and however you choose. With ready cash, take a vacation, buy a new car, boat, or something you just can't live without. You'll have peace of mind in case of an emergency. Cash for the holidays or special family occasions, even Uncle Sam on tax day. Write special ready cash checks for the things you want, pay the money back, and use it again. SunWest Bank's ready cash, ready when you are. Coors announces a unique way to brew beer. A way that captures the refreshing dry cold of the Rockies and locks it into the beer to unleash a unique cold sensation and a finish as clean as ice. It's called double chilling. Only Coors does it. Coors Dry has it. New Coors Dry. Feel the chill. Sensuous Suzanne Summers. Wow. Sexy Patrick Duffy. Wow. Together on the next Donahue. That makes two great things that are happening. Get a rare glimpse of two of TV's most energetic stars. Go behind the scenes of their new sitcom. Join the captivating Suzanne Summers and the charismatic Patrick Duffy for a peek at life on and off the set. They're hot, they're funny, and they're on the next Donahue. Wow. Weekdays at 3 on El Paso's Fine 9. Not quite as cold tonight mm -hmm. as it's been the past several nights. I'll pat it off. I'm glad you're not in your clown outfit now, Barry. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not, too. Yeah, that guy tying me up. Who, who Tricky was? tying Tricky. you up in the makeup room. Yeah. Mm, strange things happen around here. you got to be careful. I remember, it's a family program. Yes, I know. Okay, let's take a look at the way the weather was today, and we'll head to our almanac to do that. The high was 62 after an overnight low of 27. You can see the normals for the date. So we're well below the normals. Obviously, it's been cold, but things are going to be changing over the next couple of days. The records remain on the books, and a year ago, plenty of sunshine in 56. Currently outside the Channel 9 Weather Center, it's 43 degrees. Humidity is 55%. Winds are calm right now. Barometers steady at 30.22. Skies are clear. One thing I wanted to mention with the calm winds, we had a moderate pollution index today. And if you take a look out your window, not right now, though, just hang on a little bit. Probably see a haze out there with plenty of uh, smoke in the air. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute or two. Take a look at the temperatures around the region. And uh, on the cool side, once again, out at the El Paso International Airport, 43. Wada is 44. Las Cruces, 41. Marfa, 30. Up at Amarillo, it's 31. Lubbock, 35. And out over at Dallas, 33 degrees. Well, around the nation, things are cold just about everywhere. Well, there are a few exceptions, of course, in South Florida. Minneapolis coming in at 16. You can see the teens and low 20s over much of the Ohio and Mississippi valleys. In fact, the cold weather has gotten such a foothold that frost and freeze warnings extend from Pennsylvania, New York, all the way down the mid-Atlantic coast to the panhandle of Florida tonight, where temperatures there could well drop below freezing. And uh, this morning, I was going to read off all the records, but as you can see, too many of them, over 100 record lows, tied or broken this morning. And that cold air is going to slowly but surely continue to move on toward the east. As it does so, it'll allow us to warm up. Take a look in the upper atmosphere, and you can see some clouds here over the northern Rockies. And there are some snow warnings over parts of Montana coming into Wyoming. This system will drop slowly. We'll see its effects here probably late Wednesday into Thursday. And all it's going to do this time, fortunately, maybe bring a few clouds, drop the temperature two or three degrees heading into Thursday. Then it's going to move toward the east. All the good cold weather is going to settle over the Ohio Valley and eastern states for this week. And that will allow us to get into a nice warming trend. And I think temperatures will head into the 70s finally this week. So we can probably get away with the maybe only setting the electric blanket to one or two tonight. Here's the forecast, clear, not quite as cold. 28 to 32, and winds will be on the light side. For tomorrow, plenty of sunshine after a chilly start. It will get a lot warmer. 68 to 72 will be a nice afternoon. Get out and cut the grass, Micah. Light winds tomorrow continuing. Now, as I mentioned before, with all that haze in the air, can't burn any wood tonight. Sorry. So don't throw an extra log on the fireplace. Just crank up the old electric blanket. 
take a look at the night outlook, and here's the way it shapes up for the rest of the week. After we take the sunrise, of course, 6.55, sets at 5.14. Ready? Sunny, 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 partly sunny. 72, 68, 70, and 73. See, Mike, I told you it would warm up. It is warming have, up. Have faith. And we'll 72 during nice. the day, 32 at night. Not Can't bad, beat huh? it, no. <laughs> All right, Barry. Glad you took that costume off, too. <laughs> Still ahead this half hour, a San Antonio police officer is charged with shooting his girlfriend. And President Bush is the target of some interesting T-shirts. As Channel 9 News continues. Introducing the new resource in hydration, Hydrative Continuous Hydrating Resource from the laboratories of Lancôme, Paris. Instantly, this velvety formula inundates the skin with hydration. More significantly, used daily, Hydrative creates a continuous moist environment in your skin. Hydrative Continuous Hydrating Resource. The new resource in hydration, Lancôme, Paris. Available at the Popular. Circus Vargas is coming soon to the El Paso and Las Cruces area. See an all-new array of international performers and animals in a two-hour extravaganza. Tickets available at Rainbow Ticketmaster, Bassett Center, and at the Circus. See Circus Vargas at the El Paso County Coliseum November 15th through the 18th and 22nd through the 24th at Las Cruces. At Liat Solano, across from Mearscheidt Recreation Center, under the world's largest circus tent, November 19th through the 21st. For more information, call area code 915-566-7612. See family entertainment at its greatest. See Circus Vargas. Coming up later on The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson, some unusual products do some unusual things. I love you. <laughs> Plus, singer K.T. Oslin. I don't know what I've got on, very, yeah. very little. Then on Late Night, Dave welcomes David Steinberg and actor Gerard Depardieu. Uh, we may be in the wrong studio. <laughs> later tonight. Around the nation tonight, the Surgeon General wants the alcohol and advertising industries to yank alcohol ads that appeal to young people. But the Beer Institute sees things differently and refers to their constitutional rights to justify their advertising. Surgeon General Antonio Novello says many ads tell kids that alcohol is the key to fun and popularity. She also says the current tangle of state and federal rules and industry ethics aren't enough to control misleading advertising. And Democrats are taking a new approach in their attack against George Bush's frequent foreign travel. The president heads for Rome on Wednesday for a two-day NATO meeting, and the Democrats have printed T-shirts for the trip. On the front, they say, George Bush went to Rome, and all I got was this lousy recession. On the back, under the slogan, George Bush, the Anywhere But America tour are listed over 30 cities that the president has visited this year or plans to visit. Around the state, Attorney General Dan Morales overturned a 1941 Attorney General's opinion by saying water officials can regulate groundwater. Morales issued his opinion in response to a question from the Texas Water Commission, which recently held a hearing on a catfish farm that is using millions of gallons of water each day. And an 18-year San Antonio veteran police officer is free on a personal recognizance bond after being booked for shooting his girlfriend. Officer Clifton Jefferson allegedly shot the woman while off duty. Police say a witness had given 28-year-old Norma Witherspoon a ride to a location where she was confronted by Jefferson. Coming up next, there's a job opening at the University of New Mexico's football program. Bob Fields will tell us what happened as Channel 9 News continues. Mr. Scher, I was injured in a car accident caused by someone else. What are my rights? You have the right to bring a claim against negligent parties for the injuries you suffer. You may receive compensation for medical bills, lost earnings, pain, disfigurement, and future problems. You may be entitled to recover under your insurance and health insurance. Amounts will vary depending on the facts of your case and comparative negligence. For a free consultation, call 544-0100. Dear Walgreens, I'd like to tell you about my experience. I was visiting from out of state when my wife got seriously ill. She required numerous medications, so I appreciate the low prices at Walgreens. And I'd like to thank your pharmacists. They were very sure considerate. Be Being 1,100 miles from home made Walgreens service that much sweeter. 
Look what's free at Walgreens. A second set of four by six inch good as gold color prints. Free $1.99 value album too. Next day, next door from Walgreens. You want more, more choices, more for your money. That's McDonald's today, where a regular hamburger's 59 cents, a cheeseburger's 69 cents, and our new chicken fajitas, 99 cents. More for your money. That's McDonald's today. McDonald's! Today. Ah, get a McDonald's! Get a football! For only one, 99! When you buy a Diet Coke at McDonald's, collect all three. It's a kick! On the next Jenny Jones. Well, how did the baby get in your belly and how's it going to get out? Talking sex to your kids. It's never too early, um, but it can be too late. What do you tell them? It can be a very difficult topic for parents. Jenny gets some expert advice. Plus, she had her sister's baby. He's very special. An incredible story of sacrifice. What did this do to you emotionally? On the next Jenny Jones. Watch Jenny Jones. Weekdays at 9 on 9. It's one happy business at New Mexico. <laughs> it's amazing. Mike Shepard, head football coach. After last season was over with, they gave him a two-year contract extension. So, what did the university do today? They exercised their option to terminate his contract, firing him, having to pay off his pack worth $140,000. In five years as the Lobos head coach, Mike posted a record of 8 and 49. His club is 2 and 8 this year. One of those defeats, a 35 to 19 loss to UTEP. Seeing a, the need for more support for our program and uh, we hope that a change in the leadership and direction will bring about that support you never like it you never uh, anticipate it in fact you always go through until it happens to you thinking that it'll never happen to you mike has said he will stay on for the final two games of the season meanwhile in college football closer to home how about the new mexico state aggies the aggies came through with a 35 to 12 win over fullerton on saturday for their first one of the season and their first ever big west conference victory on the road and look for a few more wins state's last three games of the season are all against teams they can beat uh now we're playing some teams that are not quite as good as oregon and kansas and some of those people but they're still about our caliber so it'll be a very, very close ball games, I think. And uh, if we play well and can stay injury free, I would hope that we could get some of them. Now State's final three encounters, well, they're all blank there, but we'll tell you about them. Saturday at home against Long Beach State on November 16th at UNLV and on November 23rd at home against Utah State. And believe me when I tell you, the Aggies are a better football team than those three clubs. In the meantime, pro football tonight, Monday Night Affair, the Philadelphia Eagles entertain the New York Giants. First half up three zip, the Eagles tacked seven more on the board. When QB Jim McMahon avoided the rush, stepped up and hit tight end Keith Jackson. I smell toast, you're burnt, 73 yards for a TD. 10 zip Eagles, and it was 13 nothing Philly at the half. In the second half, running back James Joseph took the hand off and scooted in the end zone, and you could stick the fork in this one. It's done. Final Eagles 30 and Giants 7. Basketball, the District 1-5A coaches on the girls' side held a media day today at Coronado High School, and for defending district champion T-Birds, they're ready for another big year. Uh, Bob is always, so we work hard and we're ready to go. As we uh, sat here and listened to all the coaches, every coach was very optimistic, so I think it's going to be a wide open race. Every coach is predicting that they're going to make it to the top to the finals. Everything gets underway November 19th, and uh, we're very excited. Nice lady and a fine coach. Best of luck. Finally, tonight in some sports shorts for this Monday in college basketball news, the NCAA placed the Texas A&M Round Bowl program on two years probation today and banned them from postseason play for rules violations under former head coach Kermit Davis. Aggie officials say they have no plans to appeal the penalties. In pro football, after missing this 33-yard field goal yesterday against the Washington Redskins with the score tied at 13, they could have given the Houston Oilers the win. Instead, they lost 16-13 in overtime. The Oilers released rookie kicker Ian Howfield today. What have you done for it lately, huh? And in pro Boxing heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield's defense later this month against Italy's Francisco Dominati will not be sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. The WBC is withholding its approval because the Italian isn't ranked among their top ten. I'm sure that breaks Holyfield up big time, huh? That's sports. Hope you had a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, Bob. When we come back, meteorologist Barry Finn will have the wake-up forecast, and we'll show you who's going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as Channel 9 News continues. El Paso Adelante is promoting the 1991-92 school year as parents make a difference in education year. Mayor Bill Tilney, together with all area school districts, urge you to get involved in the education of your children. This school year is dedicated to you, the parents, because you can make a difference by attending parent-teacher meetings and staying informed on your child's progress in school. Without that education, there is no economic future for the children, 
And without that education, there is no economic future for the city of El Paso. KTSM, the Junior League of El Paso, and Sunland Park Mall merchants are proud to join together to present a Christmas Fair Holiday Fashion Spectacular, Saturday, November 9th from 1 to 3 at the El Paso Convention and Performing Arts Center. Come see clothing and accessories for all ages and all occasions. The Holiday Fashion Spectacular is only a part of a Christmas Fair presented by the Junior League, November 8th through the 10th at the El Paso Convention and Performing Arts Center. You won't want to miss any of it. When you think of rock and roll, you may think of guitarist Jimi Hendrix or Eric Clapton. Both Hendrix and Clapton, along with Johnny Cash, will be inducted into the 1992 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Joining them will be the Yardbirds, the Isley Brothers, and many others. Today, and they, they still sound new, they still sound fresh, and they still sound cutting edge. Cleveland will be the home of the Hall of Fame as well as the museum. Johnny Cash, get in there. That's, yeah, that was our good friend Paul Schaefer there. It was our good friend. Yeah, let's take a look at the wake-up weather for our good friend Paul and everybody else. Tuesday, November 5th, chilly sunshine, 28 to 33 light winds. Temperatures will climb close to 70, Micah. So it's going to be a little chilly tonight. To start. And yeah, no tonight burning. and to start. No wood burning. No wood burning tonight. No. Okay, Barry. That's Channel 9 News at 10. Thanks for joining us. I'm Micah Johnson from all of us at Channel 9. Have a good night. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow night at 6. Now stay tuned for The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. The Gambler returns. The luck of the draw will continue after these messages.